Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. We've got John here to go over everything that happened in this St. Johnston game. What a performance by Celtic Fox. Best performance of the season so far. One of the best I've saw in a long time as well, I might add. Uh, just a brilliant game overall. We're going to go through the game. We're going to go through anything else that's been happening. We've got John here. How are you, John? I am good, Sander. I enjoyed that game. Yeah, what did you think, John? What did you think of performance? And... Uh, it was just stylish from start to finish, but it was a bit frustrating the first half hour, wasn't it? Up until the 35th minute when we eventually got the first goal, but it was frustrating, especially with, uh, we're going to get into everything, obviously, but that chopped off goal, John, for absolutely nothing. You know, that angered a lot of people, that it certainly angered me. Aye, and you know what angered me, because I sent you a text as soon as it happened. <laughs> oh, it was, it was a shocking, shocking decision, that, honestly. We'll get into that, though. Yeah, John, it's, uh, it did take us 35 minutes to break them down, didn't it? But, but we'll all get into that. Uh, no much news concerning Celtic, John. Obviously, we fly out to Dortmund tomorrow. So that's uh, the players. Good luck to the players flying out to Dortmund. It's going to be a massive game. We'll touch on that after this St. Johnston post-match reaction. We'll touch on that a wee bit later on. Competition winners. There was two correct entries for 6 nothing. There was two. There was Babs McMahon, or McMahon, if you like, and Hugh Henry. Was the two correct entries well done to both Babs and Hugh? Let's do the spin for the still game Celtic themed prize. Let's do the spin. So well done to Hugh Henry winning this week's prize. Well done because it's very difficult to to get a correct score like six, six nothing, John. So well done to Hugh. Winning the still game metal plaque, Celtic themed metal plaque from still game. Well done to you. Just need your address off your pal on Messenger, private message. We'll get that sent out to you Monday morning. Babs, unlucky to you, pal. You got it right as well. But what I'm going to do, John, what I'm going to do, I'm feeling generous. We're going to give Babs uh, a Celtic Forever specially made key ring for Babs. So there we go. Both, both. Correct entries get a prize, John. Uh, but unlucky to Bab, she doesn't win the big prize. I look, it's a hard score to predict that, and it's six nothing. I don't think anybody will. Bab's certainly seen it coming, and so did you. But no many has seen that coming, six nothing. I certainly didn't see that coming. Very hard score to score to predict that one. Uh, so I don't know what the odds the odds were at the bookies for that. But I will done to Bab's and you. I think it's fair that. Uh, Bab, Babs gets a wee consolation prize because that's a hard one to predict. Yeah, between Facebook and YouTube, John, there was 147 odd entries, maybe a wee bit more than that. So two out of 147 entries, it's not, normally we're sitting here with 30 odd names in the hat, aren't we? so yeah, well done to you um, getting that correct and Babs, um, but we can all have one main prize winner, John. All right, let's move on. Uh, by the way, next week's competition, we'll do that uh, on the the post. The, sorry, the uh, the preview to the British Dortmund game. So look out for that, folks. And we'll put a wee separate video on our view on Wednesday as well for next week's competition. Competition against. <laughs> it's like chips. <laughs> um, <laughs> for next week's competition against Ross County, so we'll do a wee midweek uh, review for that, folks. Right, John, let's move on. First, we're going to touch on the Rangers and Hibs game the day, John. Rangers, you know, dragging themselves through to a 1 0 win at Ibrox. Uh, I saw about 15 minutes of it, John, and all I saw was chance after chance after chance for Hibs. Apparently, they missed a penalty as well, John. Rangers are right rotten, but they're still scraping through with these wee 1 nothing wins. Aye. Uh, by the way, just in case anybody has no idea what Xander was talking about there when the motorbike went past. He says it's like chips. He's not talking about like fishing chips. He's talking about the old programme that used to be on the telly <laughs> years ago. Two, <laughs> co two cops on motorbikes. I uh, don't know if anybody watched that utter garbage. Um, but I certainly remember it. It's not something I indulged myself in, no Xander. Utter garbage TV. No, let's break away from the podcast for a second, John. Why have all these cars and bikes so loud? Why, why are they getting away with being so loud? You know, obviously you're not in Glasgow, John, but see in Glasgow, just about every second car is very loud. Bikes are very loud. You know, um, you know these souped up exhausts, is, it's just annoying. Anyway, John, I just thought I'd get that off my chest. 
Uh, I, when I was younger, I spent most of my time driving when I used to drive old cars when I was a lot younger. I spent most of my time trying to fix them to make them sound quieter, no louder. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You want to see your car quiet, didn't you, John? I just want to show folk where I'm at just now, actually, John. There I'm, at. I'm sitting in Westmuir Street in Glasgow. So it's a busy road, so apologies for anybody that hears loud exhausts or traffic or buses or anything like that gone by because I'm sit sitting in the middle of a very busy street. Right, John, so what do you think of that? Hibs missing a penalty, Rangers scraping through again, John. They should have dropped points today, but obviously they didn't. Uh, but, you know, I don't think we've got much to worry about as regards to Rangers, to be honest with you. Uh, nah, look, it is what it is. We both predicted that they would win, so there's not much now we can say about that. But Hibs missing a penalty and apparently missing a lot of chances as well. Uh, players arguing with their fans, manager no happy with them. Uh, but they're no great shakes as a team. We know that. How on earth they got past Malmo, I have no idea. And to be honest with you, they should have beat Malmo by about six goals. That says everything about Malmo, doesn't it? It does, yeah, John. It is uh, pathetic, actually, when you looked at it. You know, they couldn't string two passes together, Malmo. Um, but OK, that's enough for Rivals Corner, John. That'll do. We'll call that Rivals Corner because I don't really like talking about them when we've still got the game to go through, especially. So let's get into the St. Johnson game then. Yesterday, it was a brilliant game, brilliant performance, as we said at the start of the programme. I just think Celtic, you know, they really did blow them. Once we scored that first goal, John, we blew them away, uh, goal after goal. But it did take 35 minutes before we got that first goal. But, you know, from 35 minutes on, John, uh, St. Johnson just didn't have a look in, did they? Aye, I think after that, uh, dies in my either. Goal was chopped off. I think that kind of energised the Celtic players. I really do. I think Celtic thought, come on, let's just put it up again and put this game to bed. Enough's enough. We're going to get cheated all day here. Let's let's play in top gear, see how they handle that. And uh, it did, I think it totally uh, revitalised the, the Celtic players. It gave them a lift. Because look, that goal that was chopped off, it was an outstanding goal from Celtic. The defender, Kearney, I think his name is, runs out towards Trusty and batters into him. How's that Trusty's fault? Why is that goal chopped off? Now, this is the level of inconsistency we're talking about with this VAR nonsense. One of the goals of the season chopped off via cheating. That's just the way I see it. Yeah, yeah, it was a, what a stunning finish on the half volley, wasn't it? You know, you're basically, I, when, I, when I was annoyed at it yesterday, I was saying things like, you're just not allowed to run anymore then. Because all, all Trusty did was run. He's trying to run towards the ball, and the, the St. Johnston player uh, runs into his shoulder, if you like. Um, and if anything, it's, it's nothing more than a, a shoulder challenge, isn't it? If anything, if it's even that. So the boy crumbles to the floor, uh, and Alan Muir chops it. Uh, he asks the referee to come over and he chops the goal off, John. I, I, I was stunned at that. That was a perfectly good goal, as you say, and a lovely goal as well. I might add, what a what a finish for Dyson. That was the that was the that was one of the goals of the game, if it would have stood to be honest with you. Uh but John, VAR, Alan Muir and Don Robertson and the wisdom chopped this one off. Aye, they certainly did. I, I was gutted for Dyson with that one. What a finish that was. But uh, look, if two players collide in the box, no intent to injure each other. If that's deemed a free kick, you can forget the game. The game's going to wreck and ruin if that's the case. That's a perfectly good goal chopped off for absolutely nothing. And these referees, honestly, they shouldn't be refereeing games or they shouldn't be on VAR if they are deeming that an infringement of play. Because... That's probably the worst decision I've ever seen in my life for a goal getting chopped off. It was brutal, Xander. Oh, honestly, it was. I was in total disbelief at that. And I had a wee feeling that Celt that was going to anger Celtic that. Everybody could see there was nothing wrong with that goal. And that guy, Kerry, I think his name is, he did nothing but lie on the park all day, getting a suntan, lying down every time anybody went near him. Um, Just, look... Every player does that now and again, you know, if pain's an injury or whatever, but that's the worst one I've seen in many years, Andrew. That was bad. 
Yeah, I was frustrated at that one myself. We can talk about it, John, because we won six nothing. That's you no know, people would say it's sour grapes if we drew, drawn the game or if we'd lost the game even. People would say, ah, sour grapes because you drawn or lost. But we can now talk about it because we won the game convincingly six nothing. It was a dreadful decision, to be honest with you. And then there was this foul by by Raymond, a hack, a hack from behind, John. You know, from behind. Takes the uh, Alistair Johnson's legs away. Uh, no, he was bumpy. Uh, what, 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 what has the referees actually seen here, John? This is this is unbelievable. You know, I was I was at least a yellow card. Did you see that one? I've seen everything. Ah, uh, it's at least the very least a yellow card at the very least, because we we seen a Falkirk player doing that last week, going into the back of Nicholas Coon, but catching his ankle just right through the back of him through the ankle. And he walked away with a yellow card, a disgusting tackle that was a straight red card. So, th- so this season isn't any different in that regards. Mm-hmm. With Celtic free kicks and all that, uh, nothing's changed. There's bad tackles going in in Celtic players, and uh, nothing's getting done about it. And Alistair mm-hmm. Johnson got booked for a pathetic tackle earlier on in the game. He had to watch his step throughout yeah, the game was- after that. You know, was it Alistair Johnson that got booked? I can't remember. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, John, and uh, we'll move on to the positive stuff in a wee minute, folks, I promise. Um, the positive stuff is coming, but we have to get this out of the road as well, John, because um, it's, it's, when you're, especially if you're sitting at nothing each, John, and all this is happening, you know, Raymond walks away from after a hack, then you've got a perfectly good goal two minutes later, disallowed, you know, you're thinking to yourself at that point, it's got, it's going to be one of these days, but thankfully for us, it wasn't one of these days. And then, John, we get the first goal, and it's beautiful. It's a, a lovely assist header from Kuhn. Sends Kyogo through one-on-one. It was straight for a goal kick, wasn't it? Goal kick, header through, one-on-one in the keeper. Kyogo makes no mistake, buries his shot beautifully. one nothing. Celtic, John, 35th minute. It certainly made me feel a wee bit better, um, and I'm sure it made you feel a wee bit better as well. Aye, it was Dyson Maida that got booked for nothing, by the way, Xander. It wasn't the Alistair Johnson, it was uh, Dyson Maida. Uh, it just came back to me while you were talking there. Aye, aye, the goal was um, it was Nicholas Coon's header through. It was kind of reminiscent of the goal that Kugel scored at Ibrox. Remember that? Yeah, it was, it, yeah, it, it very was, similar. It was ping pong kind of a header. A Rangers defender headed it out and a Celtic player headed it back in again. So it was... Uh, it was very reminiscent of that for me. Uh, Kyogo, fantastic finish. He's not going to miss. But I'm not going to say Kyogo's not going to miss for that, but we've seen Kyogo missing easier chances, shall we say. But uh, aye, great finish for Kyogo. Uh, and that just set the marathon uh, rolling, Zander. Yeah, John, I'm just going to hit on the bullet points today on this post-match because Kyogo did miss a few chances before that. So... I'm not going to mention all the wee bits and bobs this week because we've got a lot to get through. So, yeah, he did miss a few, but he, he, got, he finished that one beautifully. So, so, fair play to the wee man, puts his one nothing up. Then that yellow card, John, that you're talking about, Maida. I mean, this is Maida trying to kick the ball away. You know, it's just a missed time kick of the ball. He does catch the player, but, um, but can the referee know, see that that's an accidental, you know, collision? Totally accidental, but he books Maida. You know, I, I think the referee should look at it, you know, for what it is. It's an accident. He's trying to kick the ball away. The ball's already away. So he kicks the player by accident and gives him a yellow card. It's never a yellow card for me, that. Uh, no, no, it's no yellow card for me either. It's a total accident. Um, am I imagining things or did Alistair Johnson get booked yesterday, by the way? Yeah, I think Alistair did get booked, John. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he did. And I think he did get booked earlier, earlier on, but... Um, I've not got that in my notes, so I can't really talk about it. Um, because can I, can I remember, Xander? I was just trying to clarify in my mind that Alistair Johnson got booked for absolutely nothing. I don't yeah, know I'm sure what he did. I'm sure he did, John. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, but as I say, I've only wrote down some bullet points here, John, because that yellow card for me was was dreadful. A total accident, my either. You know, he's not a dirty player, dies, is he? You know, but. The referee knocked straight out with the yellow card, flashes it in his face, um, but it didn't affect Dyson, did it? Let's be honest. Nothing affects Dyson. Do you know what I loved about Dyson Maida? The players were going down injured, he was just stepping over them. None of this, come on, I'll help you back to your feet nonsense. Uh, Dyson keeps that straight poker face, stepping over players that he's, you know, been involved in, chal- in challenges with. Normally you see the Japanese players helping the players back up again. Kyogo, Hitati, 
gentleman. But we Dyson, he's got that Bruni kind of attitude, didn't he? <laughs> Uh, and I think Hatati done one later on in the game as well. He went in heavy on the tackle. You know, I think this was a wee bit of revenge for the one on Alistair Johnson earlier. And he just uh, he just stepped over him and walked away. So well done Hatati as well. You know, sometimes we need to do that because these opposite players are really going in heavy, aren't they? So, um, you know, the Celtic players have to show, you know, a wee bit of grit as well. And they did that, I think, against St. Johnson uh, on Saturday, John. I they certainly did. Aye, that's good. I like to see Celtic players giving it back, you know. That's, they're not there to be kicked up in there in every single game that they play in. Uh, and we've seen it already with Celtic. If these players need to be physical, they will be physical. Uh, so, aye, I, I think Celtic's got that edge to their game as well as the, you know, the flair side of the game. So, aye, all good. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, John. All good. Then we get our second goal in the 43rd minute. Sort of a counter-attack, assisted header by Kyogo, uh, straight to Bernardo, and it's a lovely curving shot, John, outside the box. And is it just inside? I can't remember. It's about 18, 19 yards out anyway, and it's a curler. Keeper tries to get across to it, and when you see that sort of a back of the goal camera angle, John, that is a beautiful finish from Bernardo. The, the, the player that I wanted us to sign in the summer, he was one of my personal priorities for us, and he's, uh, he's, he's just shining just now, Bernardo. Uh, but what a finish as well. It was a beautiful finish, I um, the, the build up play as well. Look, it was all good yesterday, everything that was good yesterday, but that finish was that was a stunner. He's bent it right around the defender, right into the bottom corner of the net, and that's what he's capable of, uh, Bernardo. You know, we, we both wanted him to sign. I didn't think the four and a half million pound price tag was merited, and thankfully, it didn't amount to that. Celtic going for half that. Uh, and looking at Bernardo, it's, it looks like it's a bit of a bargain, to be honest with you, at that price, Bernardo. What a finish that was. But, uh, aye. I don't think it was my pick of the game. It, possibly, I'm not really too sure, because I think every goal yesterday was a stunner, Zander. They're all good finishes, weren't they, John, to be honest with you. Especially the last one, but we'll, we're going to get to that soon enough. Okay, 3 nothing. two minutes later, it's uh, Kyogo turns uh, assist to um, goal scorer, John. He bags himself a double header. I can't remember who crossed it in, but it was some cross. I can't remember. I don't know if you remember, John. But what a header and finish from Kyogo. He's quite good with the heads, wee Kyogo, isn't he? He's, he's good with the headers. Uh, makes it 3 nothing. Uh, can you remember who the assist was for that one, John? Beautiful cross. Cannot remember, Xander. Cannot remember. Uh, do you know what? I haven't even watched the highlights back. I only watched the game when it was on. Uh, so I kind of remember like assisting. Or I remember a couple of, of the assists, but I don't remember all the assists. And I don't remember that one, but it was nice. Probably, was it no Greg Taylor? Yeah, I thought it was Taylor or Maida. I can't remember, John. But it doesn't matter because you went from, you know, assisting a goal to scoring a goal and he bags you sell a double. 3 nothing. I mean, just that that wee, that wee 10 minute spell, John, was brilliant, wasn't it? For the 35th minute up until half time, we just wiped the flare with St. Johnson after that disallowed goal. Aye. That's, that's what we said earlier. Aye. As soon as that goal was chopped half, I think it, it kind of sparked something in Celtic. They just went into third gear, fourth gear, just went through the gears right through that game and never stopped till the final whistle, Sander. Uh, nice yeah. finish from Kyogo, by the way. That was a wee cracker. Yeah, beautiful winter. Uh, the keeper had no chance with any of these goals, to be honest with you. Uh, half time goes, so I'm listening to Michael Stewart on the commentary. And uh, I think just before half time, we had another chance, actually. And Michael Stewart says, he's talking about Celtic, remember? He's not talking about St. Johnson at this point. So he's talking about Celtic, and he says, as if 3 0's not bad enough, instead of good enough. You know, he's talking about Celtic. So why is it bad that Celtic are 3 0 up? I don't know. He's just a waffler, isn't he, Michael Stewart? Um, to be fair, he wasn't that bad yesterday compared to other games I've heard him in, but he wasn't that bad yesterday. But he just waffles on a load of, a load of nonsense, a bit like me, but he's just... I, I don't hate the guy, I don't hate anybody, but I just... I'm not a fan of his uh, commentary style, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, he was okay yesterday, as you say, John. He was going off his head that they will have been disallowed, weren't he? So, fair play to him for that. But, you know, to, to be saying things like it, as if it's no bad enough, the Celtic are 3 nothing up. It's no bad, it's good. 
So why are you saying it's bad? It's good. It's very good. Uh, okay, I know the second half. Sweet for him, like wasn't it? <laughs> Sweet things like that annoy me, John. Um, honestly. Um, all right. Anyway, let's move on. Second half kicks off, John. We're four nothing up, aren't we? Uh, pretty early in the second half, and there's another Ab McGregor wonder strike, John. He's getting better and better at this. I know he's always been a good goal scorer for outside the box, but he's doing it more frequently this season. So for nothing, cruise control. And a beautiful finish, John. Um, a lovely wee finish yet again for Callum McGregor, our wonderful captain. Aye. That's four from outside the box this season. That's a good return for Callum. There's only six games being played and he scored uh, four screamers. <laughs> it's a good return. But uh, aye, that was a lovely goal as well. I thought it took a wee deflection, but, it, you know, in real time watching the game, I thought it was a deflection. But it turns out the boss just bounced in front of the keeper. That's what I kind of seen as a deflection at first. But no, it never took any deflection, just a beautiful finish. Yeah, and by the way, anybody wants to see my highlights reel that I can't put on YouTube, it's over on Facebook. It's just over to Xander John on Facebook. You'll see the highlights reel over there. Uh, Xander John page. Um, Right, John, let's move on to the, the next goal then, because as I say, it's just bullet points, because there wasn't really much happening. There was a couple of subs, but there, I suppose, so there was uh, McCowan got, gets a wee run out for McGregor. So that was our question answered, John, for last week. What happens if McGregor's injured or whatever? Who's going to play in the holding run, the holding role? Because Bernardo was put into the holding role and McCowan was pushed up one. Aye. I th- Luke McGowan was very unlucky not to get on the score sheet yesterday. Um, very unlucky. Had one saved, he hit the post. So he's he's coming onto the park to try and kind of cement his position in that team. He's not there just to make up the numbers, him, Zander. Mm-hmm. No, he's definitely not. He's a decent player, isn't he? How frustrated was he at missing a couple of chances that he had? So, you know, he's he's just desperate to score for Celtic every time he's on the park, isn't he? Young Wick McEwen. Uh, we also had Ida on for Kyogo, we had uh, Forrest on for Kuhn and Hatati on for Engels, John, so that was some of the subs that was made. And we get the fifth goal in the 72nd minute, John, and it's another nice goal. It's an assist from Bernardo, a lovely cross to Maida, header for about 10 yards out, beautiful header, diving header if you like. Used to do that myself many years ago. <laughs> uh, but another, another stunning finish, John, to make it 5-0. And Dyson gets on the score sheet after his disappointment earlier on in the game. It used to take you half an hour to get back half the grass after your diving header. Eh? <laughs> it was even worse if it was raining. It was the 35 minutes. <laughs> aye, aye, I remember that. Don't worry about that. Um, I was uh, I was somewhere a big John Hartson apparently. <laughs> Aye, no, aye. no, what a finish, John. This was one of the pick of the, the bunch for me as well. All down to the assist from Bernardo, John. What an assist again. Some lovely crosses into the box. And uh, I know people people maybe think, oh, you're only playing St. Johnson. But they kind of say that about every team we play, John. You know, we kind of keep saying, oh, it was only St. Johnson. It was only Hibs. It was only Rangers. It was only blah, 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 blah. We can only beat who's put in front of us. And I thought that the assists yesterday were out of this world, every one of them. Aye. I, th- I thought that every Celtic player in the park was outstanding yesterday, though. They did their job. And for 35 minutes, you've got to remember, it was breaking down two banks of five, basically. Try to break that down for 30, 35 minutes. It was a hard slog. Uh, and it took a lot for Celtic to get that first goal, which was chopped off. And to, you know, to respond like that after that goal getting chop- chopped off, that's just a mark of champions, and that that angered Celtic. I think they knew that was a perfectly good goal chopped off for no reason. And I, like I say, Zella, I just feel really bad for uh, Dyson Maeda because for me, that's one of the goals of the season, Zander. That was an absolute peach. Mm. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was uh, especially when you see that one from behind the goal as well. It was what a lovely volley, what a beautiful finish. But it gets his goal anyway. Sure, Dyson's happy with that. He gets, he gets on the score sheet and make it 5-0. And the Celtic support as well, John. There's just a wee, a wee mention on the Celtic supporters yesterday. Two ends of McDermott Park, wasn't it? So, two full ends. I don't know whether this reduced allocation. They must have reduced it by 30 or something because it looked like two full ends to me. 
Uh, uh, big Dermot Park, John, but the fans were just amazing yet again. They always are, I suppose, but the, yesterday the atmosphere was just tremendous. Ah, it was a really good atmosphere. I think the, the attendance was 7,500 or something like that, and uh, 4,500 of them were Celtic fans. That says it all, doesn't it? Come on, yeah. St. Johnson fan, where are you where are hiding? Yeah, they will. I think they're in trouble, St. Johnson, to be honest with you. And I, I, I don't blame Bruni for you know, walking away from that job because uh, would have just dragged Bruni down. They, you know, I don't think Scott Brown would have got anything out of the players to be honest with you, John. Nah, I, I did say that. I say it's the right thing to turn that job down because they're a trouble club. They're always going to be doing the bottom struggling, but they always seem to manage to survive for some reason, St Johnston. I think Scott Brown's fully aware of that and I don't think that's the type of club he wants to be at. If he brings their United up to the Premier League, they'll finish above St Johnson. Yeah, of course they will. Um, uh, I mean, they're absolutely flying, aren't they? But, uh, I, I mean, their United won one nothing yesterday, didn't they, against Morton? So that was a brilliant result for them. Um, but uh, Bruni just did the right thing, as far as I'm concerned, John, walking away for that job because... You know, I don't think Bruno would have went any further than St. Johnson if he would have took that job to be honest with you. But anyway, uh, that's their problem, John. That's St. Johnson's problem, not ours. As I said earlier, we can only beat who's put in front of us. Then we get the final goal, John. And this is a pick of the bunch for me, the, the beautiful one touch. The I mean, Alex Valley came on as well for Greg Taylor, John, right? So this boy's impressing me as well. That, this he just put it as impressed. He had his run out against Falkirk, and you've got to remember it was a B Celtic team that he was playing in. So he was, he was in amongst the big guns on Saturday, John, and he showed his uh, ability. He can defend, he can run, he's got pace, he can lay off a ball, he can pass. You know, he's 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 got an assist on him as well. He had an assist last week, and he had an assist this week as well, John. So I like the look of Alex Valley, John, and a. Uh, uh, some beautiful interplay but all three or four players. It was Alex Valley, there was, you know, Forrest. There was all sorts involved in this goal, John. And then the really off from Alex Valley for Ida to take it round the keeper, John, and tap it in was that was a stunning goal for me. Aye, aye. That's the pick of the bunch for me as well, that one. Uh I think it was Luke McCowan that chipped the ball through to Valley and he laid it off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beautiful, John. And even before that, there was a there was interplay before that as well, John, before uh, Luke McCowan chipped it in. It was lovely. It was a beautiful goal. I'll watch that one over and over and over again. Uh, one of the goals of the season for me, actually. And not because of the finish. It's the build-up play, isn't it, John? Oh, the finish is nice as well. Adam Eder, right place, right time. Doing, a, doing what a striker should do, sticking it in the net. Making it look easy. Uh, aye, aye, it was a stunning goal all round. But Celtic, I've noticed this season, they're doing a lot of that, that wee chip into the box like that. Mm-hmm. I've seen that quite a lot this season from Celtic. And they seem to be uh, benefiting from that particular type of move, the wee chip in. Uh, this is a, a new tactic um, uh, deployed by Brendan Rodgers, I think. It definitely is. It's, uh, it's working and long may it continue. You know, I think when I look at Celtic, John, you're talking about these wee chips into the box. There's different varieties of play with Celtic this season. Isn't there? You've got that. You've got the taking it to the byline and cutting it back. You've got your crosses into the box as well from uh, wide areas. You've got the lovely interplay, one touch stuff outside the box. There's just a massive variety of style with Celtic this season. Well, this is it. And that keeps the fans uh, on the edge of their seats, a different variety in play. Also, scoring a lot of goals from outside the box as well. That's always a good thing. So, aye. A lot of headers as well this season. So, there is a variation in the style of play that's been missing for quite a lot of years. Yeah, and we can take a corner this season. So, that's... I mean, uh, Engels nearly scored directly a corner yesterday, John, didn't he? That was... That was worked in the pace and power. The keeper just got his, his hands up enough to tip that one round. So, yeah, we've got a good corner kick taker there as well. I think even better than Matt Ray do you think? I say that a couple of weeks ago. I was it last week. He's a better corner kick taker than Matt Riley. But the thing we we'll lack still is somebody that can hit a free kick into the net. I can't mind the last time I seen Celtic scoring direct from a free kick. Yeah, I'm sure Brendan's working on that. <laughs> That's um, 
if, if that's the only thing we're missing, then, then we'll not be too far away, I don't think. But you're right, I think. I can tell you, the only thing we scored directly a free kick, to be honest with you. you know, I need to put my rethinking cap on and think back to a couple of years ago, maybe. But, uh, no, no, doesn't no matter, John. That was it. Full time. David Turnbull. David Turnbull, Turnbull, Turnbull. Used to, Turnbull. Turnbull used to score direct from free kicks. He scored a few. So... I think he's probably the last Celtic player that scored direct from a free kick. Mm, that's uh, that's a while ago, John, isn't it? So um, let us know if you know the last goal that was scored direct from a free kick in the comments, because I just can't remember. But I do remember Turnbull hitting a couple of your right, John. Um, anyways, as I say, John, that's it, full time. Six nothing, but put the game to bed. We move on to Tuesday. So that's, um, we can now talk about Tuesday night, obviously. But um, before we get to that, I just want you to be. One to ten individual scores, John. Uh, big Casper Schmeichel never had really anything to do. I think he had a couple of team efforts, but like he did, he did his goalkeeping duties. I'll give him a seven, like I used to do with Joe Hart for that. He had one safe to make, one decent safe to make, so he did that. And his distribution was always his passing out was good. Seven for him. Liam Scales eight. Uh, trusty. I'll give him an eight as well. Probably, probably an eight and a half for Trusty, actually. I thought he was he played quite well. Looked a bit uncomfortable with the left foot playing on the right side of the centre back. Uh, but he seemed to uh, cope with that quite well. He didn't struggle with it really. It was just kind of awkward a wee bit. It looked awkward when he was passing, you know, using his left foot playing on the right side. Just but I think he coped with that quite well. So I'll give him an eight and a half for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh Alistair Johnson, eight, Greg Taylor, eight. Center of the Park, Carl McGregor, eight. Uh, Bernardo, I'll give him a seven and a half. I thought his goal was stunning, but slightly quiet again, but played really well. Seven and a half for him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Arnie Engels, seven. And I'm moving up to the front position. Daisa Maeda, nine. Kyogo, nine. And Nicholas Kuhn. Of course, he came off here, I'll give him an eight. Mm, okay, yeah. Uh, some performance, wasn't it, John? Uh, you want to mark up any of the subs? Uh, nah, I'll just leave the subs. Okay, right, John, I'll quickly run through nine. Uh, goalkeeper seven. Uh, we had Alistair, who I thought was brilliant, eight and a half. Um, just a second, John. <laughs> This is what happens when you sit in West Muir Street, by the way. Um, anyway, uh, let's move on. Uh, Trusty, I thought, had a brilliant game, John. Eight and a half for me, for him. Scales, eight. Taylor, eight. McGregor, eight. Engels, seven and a half. Uh, Bernardo, eight and a half. Maeda, eight and a half. Kyogo, eight and a half. And Kuhn, seven and a half. Who do you like? Huh? Similar markings to mine, really. I did, I think, Trusty had a cracking game yesterday. Mm-hmm. Aye, aye, aye. Really, I thought he played really well. I think if he was playing on the left hand side, you'd maybe see the best out of Trusty. But uh, playing on the right, using his left foot, he seemed to cope with it quite well. It just for me, it just felt a bit awkward every time he was running out with the body pass it. You know, I just felt he's using his left foot to pass here. It's and he's not really got a right foot on him, Xander. But I, I think he was outstanding yesterday. Yeah, a couple of chances at corners as well, John. Headers are lucky. Big trusty. Ah, uh, did you see the one? The ball came out for about, I think, about 45 yards. He chested it down then volleyed it just past the post. Great effort. What an effort, John. That was what a goal that would have been, eh? Oh, that would have been some goal, that one. You, you wouldn't have seen a better goal all season than if that one had flown into the net. Yeah. Unfortunately for him, 10 inches past the post. But what a, what a chance that was. He was melted, but was, was he 50 yards out or something like that? He's chested it down. Uh, it was a fair bit out, but he was... Uh, what an effort, John. Uh, at the angle as well, wasn't it? So, uh, for a big set and a half, that's... Uh, he's got some ability there as well, I would say. Uh, it, look, it looks like a half-decent defender. He's certainly made a bigger impression on me than uh, Naroki and uh, Lager Bielka when they came in. So... I'd be quite confident with him standing in for Liam Scales, Xander. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it would be a, 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 a. I wouldn't be worried about it. Let's put it that way, John. Maybe 
big trusty coming in at any time to be honest with you. He looked quite composed in a bit. Um, uh, let's let's uh, pick a man in the match then, John. This is going to be really tough because I'm struggling myself. What are you thinking? <laughs> I'm no struggling. I know every player played really well yesterday, but I'm no struggling. Mine's is uh, dies in my ears, under all day. Yeah, yeah, he was brilliant, as was every player, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, Dyson was good, uh, really good man of the match performance for you, John. I think you got the official man of the match as well, didn't you, Dyson? Uh, but I'm going to go with, I'm, I'm thinking Bernardo, brilliant again, but another beautiful finish. Uh, Kyogo, he's double, bagged a double, didn't he? So, I don't know, I don't know, John, it's, it's very tough because Kyogo, Kyogo came off, didn't he, as well, so um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, John, I'm going to go with you then. Yeah, Dyson Maida for me, man of the match. Ah, I thoroughly deserve man of the match. I, I, I'm surprised you're even uh, contending to anybody else. There was a point in that game, I think it was 85 minutes gone, and he's chased back to the touchline where he normally sits and attacks. He's chased a player all the way back to the 18-yard box and put in a tackle and won the ball. And everybody, all the Celtic fans, got up and applauded them for that. I couldn't believe what I was seeing in 85 minutes of the game, Xander. Unbelievable energy at that point in the game. After everything else he'd just done, scored a wonderful goal. Also had a beauty chopped half. And he's chasing back and closing down again. I gave him a nine, I think, in the markings. I thoroughly deserved man of the match. Yeah, it was, wasn't it, John? Um... Yeah, but there was other great performances as well, John, so we've got to bear that in mind because you know, I was going to get to Bernardo because I thought he was outstanding. But um, then they put him further back and he sort of uh, fell out it slightly. So that was only the reason why maybe I wasn't giving it to him because he's assists as well, John. Bernardo's assists as well as his goal scoring is just out of this world, to be honest with you. But yeah, well deserved, man, in the match for me, the John, you say... 86 minute, you're 6 nothing up, he's chasing back to, to win the ball back. And keep that clean sheet, John, that's a new record, isn't it? It's a new clean sheet record for Celtic, so another record broke on Saturday as well. Aye, that's equaling a record that goes back to 19, I can't remember what the year was, 1907 or something like that. 1906, 1907, something like that anyway. Might be slightly later than that, I'm not sure, but it's equal... 1906, John, I think you're right, John. But aye, so it goes way back to then. So, look, they're playing Ross County next week. Another clean sheet. And they're breaking more records. Um, just a outstanding performance, Sander. 6 nothing. Uh And if Celtic would have won that 15 nothing, I don't think anybody could have complained. Even the St. Johnson manager says that's how good Celtic were. He complimented them, so... Aye, that, that was six going on anything at all, that result. Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, that's all we can say, John, and long may it continue, isn't it? Because, as you say, we've got Dortmund in midweek, right? We're touching that the now, but next weekend, it's Ross County away. It's another tough away fixture. It's always tough up at Dingwall, John. It's it's never been easy. So um, yeah. we're hoping it's going to be easy this time because uh, if we play like we did against St Johnston on Saturday, I don't see there being been much of a problem next Saturday or Sunday, whenever it is, John, I can't remember. Um, but I can't see there being much of a problem next weekend either, um, because it's domestic stuff that we're concentrating on, John, it always is. But let's touch on the, the Champions League then, John. Borussia Dortmund, obviously just off the back of a 4-2-1. Uh, on Friday night there, we spoke about that, um, didn't we? Um, we were hoping that Balkan would have got a wee draw and a win there to blow their morale. But no, they were 2 nothing down, Borussia Dortmund, they came back to win 4-2. Um, so they're definitely conceding goals, John Dortmund. Aye, aye, they're conceding goals, but uh, they're playing in a, a very strong league in, in Germany, so well, it's going to be a tough game. We, we are no kidding ourselves. I'm not expecting any big wins for Celtic or anything like that. I think the best we can hope for no, is... No. The, the best we can hope for there is a draw or if Celtic are going to win... A very narrow one. But we, I don't know. It's a big test for Celtic, Xander. We'll see exactly where they are when they, they show up uh, in Germany. It's one I'm looking forward to, just to see how good Celtic really are. Because what I'm seeing right now, it's the best I've seen Celtic in quite a few years. 
But it's the Champions League. Against last season's Champions League finalists, it's a good market to see exactly where we are, Xander. That's all I can say about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, usually games that way. Um, but the way Celtic's playing, I'm sort of looking forward to it. But you know, it's it's Champions League finalists, John. You know, the name of course, put it that way, John. And uh, people are saying, oh, they sold a couple of players for the final last season, but they've also spent nearly fifty million pounds in the summer as well, John. So uh, they're they're um, they've got they're a cash rich club. They've got plenty of top quality players, John, and it's. Uh, Right now, as it stands, John, I'd be quite happy with a draw. Me as well, I, I, I take a draw all day. I know a lot of Celtic fans are sitting there thinking we can beat them, we can beat them, but you've got to be realistic, boys and girls. It's Borussia Dortmund away from home in the Champions League. It's no the what you call the other competition, the Diddy teams getting it again. Europa League. It's no the Europa League. So. Uh, this is a different ball game all together. It's so the Champions League against a team, you know, it's littered with top quality talent. So Celtic will need to be on their guard. Uh, of course, Borussia Dortmund will need to be on their guard as well because uh, Celtic's got a whole lot of pace up front. Big performance. We could go there and get a draw, Xander. We really could. But we need every player. To be given a hundred percent. We say that all the time. The Champions League. It's just a fact. Every player has got to give a hundred percent, play to their best ability. Don't fear going out of the, these grounds. I think that's been Celtic's problem is uh, fear. But uh, like it's the Champions League. Celtic's now got a great record away from home in the Champions League, or at home in recent years. But like I say, it's a good. Market is see exactly where we are. Yeah, that's it, John. And can you imagine we came out of Russia Dortmund with a win? You know, where would that leave the club? You know, I mean, we're on a massive high just now before we even go to Germany. So imagine we came out of there with a win. So, you know, it can happen. It can happen. I'm not saying it is going to happen, but it can happen. I pray to God that it does happen because I think the club would just go you know, from strength to strength with a one against Bruce Dortmund. Don, John, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> Did I just call you Don now? <laughs> I think it's um, Don. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. We will we'll, we'll, we'll do a preview of the Dortmund game on Monday. It'll just be a half hour preview. We will do that. And we'll go into a wee bit more detail. We'll go through some of their players. We'll go through our players. We'll go through a whole other stuff regarding the, the game against the Champions League finalists last season, John. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that as well. All right, John. Um, all right, that just about wraps it up. I don't know if you just very quickly run through a few comments, John. So, I'll start with Roseanne. Roseanne says, I'll pick Luke McGowan for a goal. Uh, he was very unlucky, Roseanne. He hit the post and uh, the keeper pulled off a top class safe to stop him scoring. Yeah, it was, uh, he should have scored, didn't he? John? To be honest with you, he should have scored. And he's, uh, he's a decent player, McGowan. He can find a uh, a pass through the eye of a needle, couldn't he? Like McCown. So I've definitely got a good one on our books there, John. Aye. I, I like Luke McCown. And I think he's going to be he turn out to be a half decent uh, utility player for Celtic if you like. Um he's got a lot of energy. So I I look forward to seeing more of him, Zander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure we'll get plenty of game time, John. So that's um because there's going to be a lot of rotation as the season goes on, John, um, because the Champions League goes right into January next year, so there's, there's going to have to be plenty of rotation. Oh, definitely, aye. Anyway, Xander, let's, let's go on with some of your comments. Thanks for that, Roseanne. Always good to hear from you. Yeah, cheers, Roseanne. And Roseanne was up again with a 4-0 guess. Unlucky, Roseanne. Unlucky, pal. And she says, good luck, Tigers, as always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to need it on Tuesday, but yeah, good luck. Yeah, thanks, Roseanne. Thanks, pal. Thanks, Rosanne. Uh, Rosemary was up next. She says, Celts forever genius, Lisbon girl, brilliant. Aye, she's been, her poems are uh, fantastic. Aye. Yeah, she's, she's wrote another one, John. I don't know if I have the time to read it out, but if we don't have the time to read it out, we'll definitely read it out on the, the next podcast. I promise you, Lisbon girl. Because I put a wee separate video on John, didn't I, for the, um, it was just like a wee tribute to our legends that I passed on. I put that on YouTube if anybody wants to watch it. I'll put a link in the description. 
are just our poems and the the wee song that goes with it. It's just it just goes well together. I uh, I don't think most people's heard the Fields Rath and Rye acoustic cover I did. It's just an instrumental, but you can maybe put it on at the end of the video so that people can hear it, Sander. Um, yeah, I've, I've got it on the video as well, John. The separate video that I put on the day, so it's there for him to watch to watch the actual video, and I'll put it on at the end of this, John. Not a problem. Uh, just the tune itself, uh, yeah. because it's it was easy enough today. But I like it. I, I do like that version of the Fields Rath and Rye. It's uh, instead of putting the theme tune on at the end, you can put stick that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or you can hear it underneath uh, uh, Lisbon Girl's poem. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and thanks, Lisbon Girl. That's three poems she's wrote for us, and it's uh, everyone is a belter. Uh, we'll get the the most recent one out tomorrow, pal. I promise you. I've not seen that one yet, but I look forward to it. Yeah. Uh, you need to send me that. Maybe I can put a wee, make a wee tune up for it, Sander. Well, Just done, a I'll, I'll, I'll forward you the, the actual screenshot of it, right? And you can you can mess about with that, pal. Aye, I will make you a star, uh, Lisbon Girl. I'll put the music and you can pay me handsomely. Yeah, well, just to, to quickly, I know I'm running out of time to go soon, but the the Facebook, John, there's, I put your your song and the poem together with, with the video and there's something like three or 4,000 views already on it. So, yeah, it's certainly gone about, certainly get, get, getting out there, John, that's for sure. Aye. All right, thanks for that comment anyway. Next up was Casby78. He says, Hi, Xander Franco here, 4 1 Celtic, and either to score. Unlucky Franco, thanks for your comment, bud. Yeah, uh, very unlucky. Yeah, uh, either to score. Yeah, uh, he got his goal, big man. Uh, keep the guesses coming in, Franco. Uh, thanks, Franco. One Club yeah, since 18, 1888 says, Nice poem at the end and another great listen. Thanks, One Club. Cheers, One Club. Yep, yeah, thanks for that. Keep them coming in, pal. Uh, Roseanne was in again. Uh, she says, P.S. Well done, Celtic ladies, and well done, Lisbon girl, for smashing we yeah, poems. The, yeah, the ladies, yeah. probably. Yeah, superb, John. The ladies done superb, didn't they? It's just been a great week overall, isn't it? So look, I hope that continues on Tuesday. And yeah, the poem, yeah, everybody loves it. It's superb. Aye. Roseanne says, it shows she loves the podcast. Well done, lads, uh, for having a great pod. Love it. Thanks very much for that, Roseanne. That's appreciated, pal. But, thanks, hope, you're, hope you're lying chilling. Uh, Sunday, nice wee uh, steak pie dinner or something like that. Listen to the Celtic Forever podcast. It sounds good. Steak pie in the Celtic Forever podcast, bro. Stick of the pie. <laughs> it's a uh, 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 Dan Bream is up next. Thanks, Roseanne. Dan Bream is up next. And Dan says, great show, boys. Just catching up. 3-0 uh, Celtic. Nicholas Kuhn, a score. Unlucky, Dan. Thanks for your comment, buddy. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Good to have you back, pal. And uh, thanks, Roseanne, as well, for the comment before. Mad About Football says another great poem at the end. It was a good poem. Yeah, brilliant poems. I'm loving, the, loving them. So I'm loving them. Uh, uh, we've got another one tomorrow, so keep your eye open for that, folks. Uh, uh, Jim Ritchie was up next, brother of Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. <laughs> What's that thing about? I think I said that one months ago when Jim came on. Yeah, uh, yeah, you did. Uh, Where's Jim saying, <laughs> Jim? Uh, Jim Ritchie says Celtic six, St Johnston three, and Cal Mac to score. Well, you got the six right, and you got the Cal Mac to score, but St Johnston scored in three against Celtic. Jim, come on, mate. That's what Jim's thinking, John. He's thinking Falkirk last week scored in two against us. St Johnston are a better team. Might score one more, but no, that was never going to happen, was it? Because big trust at the back, John. Yeah, I think we can trust big trust him because he's 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 just an outstanding defender, John. And he, not, he never let anything pass. I mean, if you got to remember that first thirty-five minutes, John, they were coming at us. You know, there was times when they were they uh, trying to come at us, should I say? And big trust it and big scales. You know, defence were just mopping absolutely anything that they tr tried to throw at Celtic to be honest with. Aye, oh, exactly. Aye, they two were outstanding yesterday, Xander. Skills yeah. and trusty, absolutely brilliant. Uh, especially yeah. trusty, I thought he slightly edged it for me. Right footed player, uh, sorry, left footed player on the right hand side. I think he handled it pretty well. Uh, 6 3, uh, Jim thought, look, Falkirk shouldn't have had two goals last week, by the way. Both of their goals should have been chopped off. Oh, aye. Yeah, that was. Uh... 
that was just, uh, you know, fair play to Falkirk. They did, I know they went over it, but I think Falkirk were very good. And uh, there's a couple of nice finishes, John. I know they should have been chopped off because they fills in the build up to the goals, but fair play to them. There were two nice finishes as well. Goalkeeper had no chance for them. I absolutely no chance, but uh, it should have been chopped off. That's all that matters to me. And uh, but for, I think Falkirk played better than St Johnston, but uh, Falkirk were playing against Celtic's second string, so you know, there you go. That's the way I see it. Yeah, that's it. All right. Yeah. Hey, John, yeah. how you go? Is that, is that us for comics? Oh, there's a few more, Sanders. I'll read the blast through them very quick. Uh, Paul McCune says, Hail, yeah, hail Celtic and the Celtic women. Uh, thanks Paul Kevin yeah. McKenna says great podcast tonight boys depending on what players, players Brendan picks for tomorrow night I don't think it will be a high scoring game I'm probably wrong but I reckon it will be a clean sheet and turn out of the boys nearly forgot well done Lisbon girl another cracking poem tonight thanks for that Kevin yes Kevin thanks Paul James Doran says don't trust Robertson as referee and Muron on VAR so players will have to watch their step oh you're right there James we had to watch them yesterday at the Robley Dyson's goal. Yep. Case in point. Case in point, John Bell said, James. Uh, uh, Peter Hendry says, I think Bernard Bernardo should start the game as the boy is in great form at the moment. Well done, Lisbon Girl. Another great poem at the end of the show. Yeah, Bernardo did start and he, and he done brilliant. So I hope he gets more and more starts as the season goes on, to be honest with you. Aye. Well, that's the last comment. I've just spotted Lisbon Girl's new poem there, but we'll leave that till the preview of Dortmund's under I'll yeah, that tomorrow, John. yeah tomorrow John we'll get that out tomorrow I promise you Lisbon Girl that'll get read out tomorrow so I just ran out of time John that's uh, over 50 minutes so um, right John thanks for coming on thanks for coming on buddy any final thoughts before we split aye um, looking forward to the game that's all I can say but we'll, we'll get into that on Monday's podcast okay John that's fair enough uh, thanks folks for viewing watching listening whatever Thank you very much for interacting as well, all the commenters interacting with the, the channel. We appreciate every single comment. Keep the comments coming in. Hit like, hit share, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell, folks, and we'll catch you all tomorrow. Hail, hail for now. Hail, hail, Xander. See you later, mate. Hail, hail.